Former Prime Minister Paul Keating has today unleashed on the Labour Party, journalists Joe Biden, America, the British Prime Minister and Anthony Albanese in a stinging press club address. No one was off limits in Keating's speech, which attacked Australia over the AUKUS deal announced yesterday by Albanese, Biden and Sunak. He dubbed it the Kabuki Show. He said it was the worst international decision by an Australian Labor government in more than a century. Keating claims China has never wanted to attack us and never will. For 360 billion, we're going to get eight submarines. Right? This must be the worst deal in all history. He argued for the same cost, you could get 40 to 50 class Collins class submarines instead of just eight nuclear powered ones. He said the nuclear subs are so bulky that they'd be seen from space and were too big for the shallow waters of the Australian coast. He said there'd be a third out at sea at any one time and instead we will now have three in the water instead of 15. I saw with Miles, I saw Vice Admiral Collins, the head of the Navy, recently. They came up to see me and Collins said, you know, well, Mr Keating, he said, you know, we've got to put the snort up every night to get the oxygen. I said, Admiral, please don't think I'm stupid. You only need to put the snort up if you're going at full power. If you go just cruising, you put the snort up every four days or so. And it may be that it is more risky now than it was 30 years ago. But if you've got 15 of the things at sea, how in the God would knocking one out matter? But if you knock one of the three nuclear subs out, it really matters. So now, they don't snort, but they'll be found because of their bulk. Keating argued that Australia has got the raw end of the deal because we're paying such an exorbitant amount of money to support what he says is American manufacturing. He also criticised Joe Biden's mental capacity. This is a stunning statement for a former Prime Minister to make. At the Kabuki show in San Diego a day or so ago, there's three leaders standing there, only one is paying, our bloke, elbow. The other two, you know, they've got the band playing, happy days are here again. You know, the American president can hardly keep put three coherent sentences together. You know, he was happy about it all. Rishi couldn't believe, you know, uh, Rishi, Rishi, you know. Uh, and so, guess what? We're going to pass across $380 billion, A dollars, over time to... British aircraft BAE systems, a British company to build these things and to the, and to the, and to the American submarine things, uh, submarine companies, and we have to build the bases here. So, you know, the, at, the, at San Diego, there was only one payer, the Australian Prime Minister. Keating criticised the Labor Party for agreeing to AUKUS. He said when Penny Wong first got the job in shadow foreign affairs, she decided to have no division with the Coalition on National Security or Strategic Policy. Keating accused her of folding in with Julie Bishop and Maurice Payne. He said she ran the smallest of small target policy. He said Labor was called in by the Morrison government at 4 o'clock one afternoon and by 10 o'clock the next morning they had taken the AUKUS policy on board in its entirety. Keating said someone could only do this. He said a Prime Minister could only do this if he was basically incompetent. And the Prime Minister's running around recently saying, so I'm very proud to be able to take that policy in 24 hours. Well, how would you take a policy which is going to cost this much money, have these consequences for our relations, A, with China, with the region, B, in terms of our industrial base, how would you do this in 24 hours? You can only do it if you have no perceptive, no perceptive ability to understand the weight of the decisions you're being asked to make. It's, you know, other people call it incompetence. I'll call it maybe try, trying. Astonishing. Keating didn't miss Penny Wong either, accusing her of a failure of foreign policy. He says she has uncritically accommodated the wishes of the United States. One of the principal problems of this deal is that defence has overtaken foreign policy. 
over day. I mean, you don't see Penny Wong out there. You see Miles out there. You know, standing on the submarines is Miles. It's not Penny Wong. So what's happened is 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 that the, the military have taken over the the, for, the, for, the foreign policy, and as a consequence, we're not using diplomacy. I mean, let me just make this point. Running around the Pacific Islands with a lay around your neck handing out money, which is what Penny does, is not foreign policy. It's a consular task, fundamentally. Foreign policy is what you do with the great powers, what you do with China, what you do with the United States. This government, the Albanese government, does not employ foreign policy. Keating went on to defame Australia's top spook, the highly regarded head of the Office of National Intelligence, Andrew Shearer. He called him a cuckoo who is still in the Labor nest. Keating said it was Shearer who decided to get rid of the French subs in favour of American ones. Keating also said the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, ASPE, he said it's a pro-American cell run by a former private secretary to a Liberal minister. He was making the point that Liberal players are still shaping policy under a Labor government. Wouldn't you think the first thing a Labor government would do would be knock all their heads off? No, no, no. Andrew, Andrew uh, Shearer was in the plane on the way to Tokyo with the Prime Minister. You know, I mean, they, they've been brought in. I mean, the, I mean, this, this says something about the left in Australia. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, politically in the Labor Party, I fought the left most of my life. You know, always mostly on behalf of the United States. But the two principal people on the left in Australia are now Anthony Albanese and and and, and Penny Wong. And what they've done, they they have they have uh, uh, essentially accommodated. Um, the, um, the the strategic wishes of, of the United States, uncritically, uncritically. This is the left, you know. And, of course, they would say, the old left, oh, that mob in Sussex Street, you can't trust them. But, God, you know, if you look at me or Laurie Brett or Leo McClay, all that, we look like Bolsheviks compared to them. Bolsheviks. Keating says Australia's sovereignty is being eroded by the alliance with the United States. And he said Albanese thinks that if he says the word sovereignty enough times, Australia will actually have it. Keating also claimed, and this is something we've never heard before, that the French government has offered Australia a new deal on a nuclear submarine with an early delivery date of 2034 and a fixed price. But if Keating implied Albanese was incompetent and if he said Joe Biden could barely string a sentence together, well, he reserved his harshest words for the journalists in the press gallery. He said this about the Sydney Morning Herald's Peter Harcher. I've been attacked by, uh, by Harcher, that psychopath who runs this attack on me about me being a representative or putting the views of the People's Republic of China, you know. But he's had free movement for five years to run this scare campaign in Australia. And this was supported by the management of Nine Group. And this fellow, James Chessel, I understand, sits at the top. So Chessel is part of the responsibility here, you know. And so this, this maniac has put this stuff... And he, he's on the ABC, he's on the drum every other night, you know. He's got the great stentorian voice, but no stentorian mind to match it. Asked a very good question by Matthew Knott from the Sydney Morning Herald about China's treatment of the Uyghurs, Keating didn't properly answer him. And instead, he said this. After what you co-wrote with Harcher last week in that shocking presentation in the Herald on Monday, Tuesday, and when you should hang your head in shame, I'm, I'm surprised you even have the gall to stand up in public and ask such a question, frankly. You know, you're... Do the right thing and drum yourself out of Australian journalism. Our own Olivia Casely from Sky News asked a brilliant question about the fact Keating hasn't had a briefing on the issue since the mid-1990s, that he didn't foresee the military build-up in China. And so what makes him so sure now that China isn't a military threat to Australia? Keating called her question dumb and said Australia's intelligence agencies were dopey. Because I've got a brain principally, and I can think, and I can read, you know, and I read every day, you know. I mean, why would China want to threat? What would be the point? They get the iron ore, the coal, the wheat. What, what would be the point of China wanting to occupy Sydney and Melbourne, militarily? And could they ever do it? I mean, could they ever bring the numbers here? 
it would, it would be an armada of troop ships to do it, you know. So you don't need a briefing from, 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 from the dopey security agency we have in Canberra to tell you that, you know. I mean... I know you're trying to ask a question, but the question is so dumb it's hardly worth an answer. You know, Sky News, you've got to, you know, you've got, you've got to dust up your reputation beyond Sky News, you know, and you're probably doing your best to do that. And Olivia Casey will be on the show with me to discuss Keating's performance in a moment. Asked about his own commercial interests in China, Keating denied that he had any at all. He said he was only paid about $5,000 a year to sit on the board of the China Development Bank for five years. He even seemed to suggest that he'd somehow been spying on China for Australia, bringing back intelligence and information. But it was on the Uyghurs where Keating was thoroughly exposed as a China apologist. Any rational person would condemn China's shocking treatment of minorities in Xinjiang. United Nations reports, so many reports from human rights groups, have likened it to concentration camps. It's genocide. But instead, Keating barely criticised China for this and instead spoke of human rights atrocities in India. He even compared it to deaths in custody in Australia. There is no comparison here. Keating did, however provide a rare insight into the well-concealed divisions in the Labor Party. And if this is what he says publicly about Prime Minister Albanese and Foreign Minister Penny Wong, you can only imagine what he's saying behind the scenes. Before you dismiss him as some colourful character from a bygone era, Keating in today's Labor government is still highly influential. According to his biographer Troy Bramston, Albanese, Richard Miles, Jim Chalmers and many other senior ministers have sought his counsel since they came to government. Even New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet regards him as a mentor. Just listening to his words today here, there's no question, his way with words is second to none. His performance today, another reminder of why he's the strongest orator of our time. No current politician even remotely comes close. But on China, he was utterly inconsistent, completely hypocritical and showed questionable logic. And he deliberately ignored China's egregious human rights atrocities, its coercive conduct and its aggressive military build-up. The very actions that have forced Australia into a higher embrace with the United States and Britain. Well, even by Paul Keating's standards, this was an utterly extraordinary performance at the National Press Club today, an unhinged uh, spray uh, at his friends and former colleagues in the Labor Party and the government, an attack on our closest allies and friends, the United States, the United Kingdom, but also uh, India. Previously, he's attacked Japan. In fact, there's only one country in the world that he appears unwilling or unable to criticise, and that's China. He's not just a former Labor Prime Minister, but a Labor Party legend, uh, admired uh, by many of the current Labor MPs, senators and ministers. And this demands a, a, a senior response, a response from the Prime Minister, from the Foreign Minister, from the Defence Minister, comprehensively setting out how they depart from his thinking. 